All right, now, if there's no time and space, and I avoid using that speed or backdoor, I can create seams in the return. All right, so we have to use a different technique, all right, when we are closer to the ball, all right, and the blocker is in phase with the ball without time and space. All right, we call that a two-gap technique. So now I'm in close proximity to the ball. If I use one of those avoid techniques, I'm going to create a vertical seam for the returner to gain yards. So instead, all right, without time and space, we want to go through the blocker and let the ball declare all right, before we pick a side. All right? So here we are. At the same time, part of our group is working avoid techniques. The rest of the group is working a two-gap technique. So here's our blockers. All right, we're getting the near foot in the ground. Tight hands and elbows, staying in speed with our feet. All right, and once that ball declares, we'll disengage from that block, all right, and make the play. And this is all going on during that specialist period that I talked to you about earlier. Now, here's a competitive drill doing the exact same thing. Okay, you can see we've got a blocker, we've got a cover man, we've got a ball carrier, close proximity, all right, so this is close to the return, all right, you can see the blocker trying to hold his ground, all right, the cover man gets his near foot in the ground, tight hands and elbows on that two-gap technique, keeps his eyes on the ball, disengages once the ball declares, all right, great look at a two-gap. All right, a little bit of juice going there at practice with the competitive drills. Near foot in the ground, tight hands and elbows, right? Speed position, right? Blockers in power, cover man's in speed. Tackle is made in speed. All right, clip from a game. All right, I apologize, I don't have all my Memphis video uh, down at South Carolina yet, so this is one I had to pull up from a... Uh, from back at Maryland a few years back. All right, but watch the cover man here, okay? And here he is, right? This blocker is dropping really deep, okay? He's in close proximity to the returner. If he goes around this block, he might create a seam, right? The blocker's in phase with the ball, all right? So he makes a great full-speed decision here to go through the blocker, all right? And then once the ball declares... He disengages, okay? On the same play, you have another player who uses the same technique, but I disagree with his decision because the ball is way over here. These are pro numbers. It was uh, This game was in Detroit, all right? He attacks the blocker when he really doesn't need to because this blocker, unlike this other blocker, is not in phase with the ball. So he could have used an avoid technique here and maybe ended up two-gap in the off returner, but didn't need to two-gap this blocker. All right, and you could see where, by doing so, he really took himself out of position to make a play here. Okay, so that brings up a great point in terms of leverage being a, in, an advantage, right, in phase or out of phase blocks without time and space. When the blocker's in phase, we need to go through them, but if the blocker's out of phase, right, then I can go make a play on the ball, right? That's an important.